Hey, praise the Lord. A very wonderful good evening to you who are watching. Hey, Mami Sala, I'm glad that you're joining. Thank you. I'm waving to you right now. Praise be to the Lord. This is Felix of Pena Child Care Foundation. And here we are. It's a moment of prayer with me. It's a moment that we need to call unto the presence of the Lord to come and um, manifest in our lives. There are very many things that are happening in the world, but the Lord is good and the Lord is worthy. So I want to welcome you and I want to ask of you to share this live video to your friends and you can name tag them in the comment thread so um, that we can be a blessing to many. Like how I said yesterday that it takes a, po uh, it takes a heart that for us of a selfless person that we as children of God who have understood the secrets of God, have understood God very well to be able to reach out unto those that are not doing well. So the moment you share the live video or this moment of prayer, or if you can name tag or call somebody to come together or to know about what the Lord is saying, it can be a conduit of change to that person. So God can open up, God can, can, can do something that can touch your heart. I've had testimony, I've had many people testify about how great it is our God when we pray. So when we pray, when you share, when you love, God will always change somebody. And there is that person that is waiting for that small thing, for that act of yours to be blessed and to be to come to the kingdom of God. So we value that and we praise the Lord. So I want to request you, my friends, if you're watching this live video, please, let's just share this live video so that it can reach out to many people. Hey, Johnny, I will come you. Praise be to the Lord. Thanks for joining and thanks for watching. I recognize your presence. So I was saying that let's share this live video so that it can bless many. And tonight I want to share with you about the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is one thing that matters in our lives, but this comes to the covenant that the Lord did with, uh, with that the Lord did with children of Israel and as we Gentiles. But there are two covenant, two, two kinds of covenant that the Lord did with children of Israel. Today I don't want to go to take much time i just want us to share with the in the word of the lord and pray because it makes much meaning when we pray there are things that used to keep the children of god that keeps the children of god in his presence and god uh, assures us with his presence because of the covenant that he makes. So we know that in Deuteronomy 29, 12, the covenant of God had made with children of Israel, he sealed it with an oath. God, um, God saw to the children of Israel that he will be with them by, 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 in the covenant by swearing unto them. And we know to ask children of God in Revelation. If I, we read very fast in Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. Let's run there. Chapter 5, verse 9. The Bible says, the Bible says, um, if we receive the witness of men, Revelation chapter 5, it says, um, so, sorry, sorry, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 says, and they sang a new song saying, thou art worthy to take, a, to take the book and to open it, to open the seals, therefore, for thou you was slain and has redeemed us by God to God by the by your blood out of each and every kindred, kindred and tongue and people and nations. So here we see these were the twelve of men that were worshiping God in heaven, and they sang songs saying that you're worthy, and took the book and opened and to open the seal, that therefore you were slain. Now they're saying that Jesus Christ was slain, and they sang the songs and that you has redeemed us to God by your blood, out of each and every nation, out of each and every tongue, and out of each and every people and nation. Now this is how Christ bought us. They were saying that you made a covenant with all people. In Old Testament, God made a covenant with only children of God of Israel, and other people were left outside of the covenant. And God God will see him swearing an oath to the children of Israel, then he assured them of his presence. Now in New Testament, God, uh, Jesus, 
are made under covenant by his blood to redeem us, we, children, we Gentiles, to redeem all the children of Israel from their nations and he bought them and he made a covenant with his blood and he redeemed us and his seal was his blood so he bought us he made a covenant with us and one thing that i want to tell you that in each and every covenant that the jesus that god and jesus made with the children and the gentile that jesus redeemed was the blood of jesus in the new testament and in these two covenants we see that they were all they are all standing aspects in this covenant that God told his people, that God promised unto his people, that assured them that of his presence. And in everything, there was the presence of the Lord. That's the only major aspect that we can always gate or have in the covenant that God used to do with the children of God. And in most cases, we all know that when God promises, he fulfills. When God promises, he makes it come to happen. In Numbers, he said that I'm not a son of man to promise and not fulfill. He said that I'm not a child, or and I'm not a, I'm not a human people that I can speak and don't fulfill. So when God promises, he fulfills. And he could, he could always be bound to his oath and to always assure us of his presence. And we all know that God will always fulfill. And we see God when he appeared to Moses, he told him that uh, when he told him that put off your shoes for where you are, you are in a, pre in a holy presence. You are in the presence of the Lord. And in most cases, when we come to the presence of the Lord, it is always a holy presence. You know, sometimes when Moses appeared to the burning bush and God told him that Moses, put off your shoes for you are in a holy ground. What could make difference in that moment? It wasn't because Moses was in the desert, but what made a desert a holy place was the presence of the Lord. So in most cases, as children of God, we need the presence of the Lord to come into our lives so that we are able uh, we are able to do some things because without the presence of the Lord, some things cannot happen in our lives. And let me tell you something. The presence of the Lord can make us distinctive or can distinguish us from other people, from you um, and your friends. What makes a difference in your life that you are distinction, disting, distinctive or you are different from your friends is the presence of the Lord. So this moment, this morning, I want us to always call up, I want us to call upon the presence of the Lord. I want us to call upon the presence of the Lord. And I want you, whenever you're doing any other thing in your life, to always call upon the presence of the Lord because it will make a difference in your life from your friends. And once you're in the presence of the Lord, there are things that you will not look unto. You will not look at the challenges or the differences or the problems that you go along with in your life because the presence of the Lord is the assurance of all things that you need. So this morning, I want us to welcome the presence of the Lord. I want us to call upon the presence of the Lord because he promises all his presence in the, his covenant. He promises his presence in all the covenant that he made with us. We know in the in Old Testament, God made a covenant with children of Israel. If I may read in Exodus chapter 34, Verse 28, 34 verse 28, this is what the Bible says. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights, and he did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of covenant and ten commandments. He wrote upon the, the tables the words of covenant and the Ten Commandments. In Old Testament, God made a covenant with his children of Israel by giving them the Ten Commandments to follow. And it came to pass when Moses saw, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with two tables of testimony and Moses in Moses' hands, when he came down from the mount, from the mount, that Moses with not that the skin of his face shone while he was talking to him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his, of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. And Moses call, called unto them and Aaron, 
And all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked unto them. Praise be to the Lord. There are two things to note. Here Moses, God made a covenant with Moses, and he gave him the Ten Commandments. And now when he came down to bring the Ten Commandments to the children of, of God, to the children of God, the Israel, there, are two, there, there is something that we note here. The Bible says that his skin... And of his face shone while he was talking to them. It was radiant in the actual sense. So this made a difference between Moses and the children of Israel. We see he was from talking to God. Now his face was shining, was radiant. His eyes were radiant, which shows that Moses was in the presence of the Lord. Now that was a mark of distinction that distinguished Moses from the children of Israel. The children of Israel, we know by that time they had made themselves a calf and they started worshipping uh, the idol. But then when they saw Moses, they got afraid because they were not, they were in sin. They were in sin and they got afraid and they ran away. And it is Moses now calling them because he was from making a covenant with God. And Moses was calling them back to come in the presence of the Lord. And he gave them his assurance that God is going to be with us because he has made a covenant and he has made an oath. And he gave them the Ten Commandments to follow so that he, they can keep themselves in the covenant. Now in the two New Testament as we children of God, God gave us things that we should follow as the children of God. I want us to read in Acts chapter 41. If you can open your Bible and read with me, it will make a big difference. In Acts ch chapter 2 verse 41 to 43, I want us to see the things that God gave us as children of God that can keep us in his covenant. And once we're in his covenant, once we're with him in the covenant, the thing that will keep us in his presence, so that when we call upon the presence of the Lord, he can always come to us and answer. He can always bring us closer. Because now, let me tell you something. When Job, when God called Job one of his children or his people that fear his name, there are things that Job used to do that kept him in the with kept the presence of the Lord. Now listen to what the the, the act says in chapter 2 verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day were added unto those about 300 souls. Verse 42. They continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine, fellowship and in breaking bread and in prayer. Praise be to the Lord. Now listen 43. And fear came upon each and every soul. Many wonders and signs were done by apostles. I want us to go back to verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of the blade in, and in prayer. And they, those people that were saved by then, when we go back to verse 44, 41, then they glad, that gladly received, then they, the Gentiles that gladly received, you, my, my brothers and sisters, we that received Jesus Christ, we were baptized, you who were baptized, in the same day they were added unto the 3,000 souls that were saved. And they continued steadfastly. Now this is the point to note. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread. Now this is what happens. We need to keep ourselves in the word of Jesus. This is what keeps the presence of the Lord in our lives. Keeping yourself in the doctrine in the apostles' doctrine, in the word of Jesus, in the word of Jesus, in the word of God, and fellowship to always come together and fellowship and pray. Listen, if we do not fellowship, we know the Bible says that when we gather, when two or three are in, 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 in when two or three come together and in and in my name, I will be in their midst. Jesus comes into the midst of two people who are fellowshipping in his name. Now, we need to always fellowship. And the second thing he said, in breaking the bread. Now, breaking the bread, this means sharing the blood of Jesus. This means generosity. This means giving to the poor. This means serving the Lord by reaching out unto many people, by living a selfless life. And now he says... 
and in prayers. Now this is a point to note that we should always pray, not to miss something. In Thessalonians, the Bible says that pray continually. These are the things that we do continually that keep us in the presence of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, in all things that you've been doing, I ask of you to check yourself. Have you overcome the presence of the Lord in your life? Have you kept the presence of the Lord in your life? It does not matter that you have been in the presence of the Lord and left. If you depart from the presence of the Lord, then that means you still need the presence of the Lord. You are outside the covenant. We know that what God assured us in the covenant, it was his presence. It was his presence. We were all redeemed. We Gentiles and the children of Israel. In Old Testament, God made a covenant with children of Israel, reading outside the the living outside the, the Gentiles. And we see in New Testament, Jesus, when he sacrificed his body, when he sacrificed himself, when he came on this planet as and died for you and me, he bought us all with the price of his blood. And his blood became the seal. And in, we see in Revelation that the, 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 the 12, uh, the 12 uh, saints in heaven, they bow down and praise him because they knew he's the one that redeemed you. He's the one that redeemed them from the, 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 the world they were in and he bring them into the covenant. Now we see Jesus bring all nations, bringing all people, all languages in the world together in the covenant of God which he sealed with his blood. We know that he paid the price that we cannot pay. We cannot give anything in return. Now this is what calls us into his presence and now the apostles they went in his presence preaching and serving many people and they told them that you have to keep yourself in the word and in fellowship and in breaking the bread and in prayer so i ask of you my brothers and sisters if we pray if we keep ourselves in reading the word of the lord if we keep giving and sharing we will keep ourselves in the presence of the lord i want us to read in job chapter 1 Job chapter 1 verse 1 to 6. This is how we will come to understand that this this is, this is why God called Job his servant whom he esteemed so much because he knew that Job was, keep do, was doing things that were keeping him in the presence of the Lord. As children of God, these scriptures are here to teach us how to move our spiritual life and how to move in, our, in, in, in this world. Let me tell you, if you keep yourself in the presence of the Lord, the things that will not attack you, the things that will not come to you, because the one who changes them the one who fights for you he is with you and he is in you in his he is in the presence in his presence he is with you the, the challenge that come to you they will not come to you they will not fight you they will not overcome you because he is with you he is with you the one who says that i am he no one that says that i am he it is the lord who says that i am praise be to the lord job chapter one and then there was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and secured evil. Job feared God and he shunned evil. How do we fear God? By keeping in his word, by worshiping him. We know that Job was a giver and a worshiper and he did it continually and built the hedge of protection upon him. Listen to what God said to Satan. This is when Satan was moving around the world and the Bible says in the second verse, and there were and there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also were, was seven thousand sheep and three hundred camels, five hundred yokes of oxen, and five hundred she ashes, and a very great household. So that his, so that this man was a great was the greatest of all men of all the men of the year of the east. Now let's go to verse. And six. Now there was a day when the Son of God came in, came to present him, they came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. There was a time when sons of God came to present themselves before the God and Satan came among them. Now let me tell you, when you come to present yourself before the Lord, you come with worship, you come with praises, you come with offering to give unto the Lord. And the Bible says that also Satan came with among them. Now verse 7 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Thus, then Satan answered, Lord, and said, From the going to and fro in the earth, 
and from the walking up and down in it, the Lord said unto Satan, Has you considered my servant Job? Now you see God is esteeming in Satan. Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, as perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and shun evil. Now God is esteeming in Job. He said, have you seen my servant Job, the one who esteemed God, the one who moves well with me and who fears God and who does not take good, take good in evil? And Satan answered, Lord, and said, don't Job fear God for not, for nigh. Praise be to the Lord. Has not you made a hedge about him and about his house? And about all that he has on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increasing in the land. Praise be to the Lord. Now Satan is telling God that have you not made a hedge or put a protection on him and his children? Because Job feared the Lord, and he shunned evil. God put a protection, a hedge around him, not only him alone, but because he worshipped and gave and praised the Lord. Lord and feared evil. He put a hedge around his children, around his household, around his animals, around his servants. Now this is what happens when we fear the Lord, when we fear the God of Israel, when we shun evil, when we keep ourselves in the, in the presence of the Lord. The Lord put a protection, a hedge of protection around our families, around our children, around our, our parents, around our substance, around our workers, and he makes you different. Now, because Job feared the Lord, he distinct he made he gave him a distinction from all other people, and now he's taking pride in him, telling Satan, Have you seen my servant who esteemed my who esteemed my who esteemed my name, who fears evil, and who is upright in his walking around the whole world? What are the things that Job used to do? He used to worship the Lord in truth, he used to give faithfully, and he did all these things continually. Job never stopped praising the Lord each and every day, each and every Every moment he had to always praise the Lord, he had to always give, he had to keep himself in the presence of the Lord. Now, this is what the presence of the Lord makes, my brothers and sisters. It keeps you in in, in the in the right ways of God. If you keep yourself in the right ways with God, his presence will always be with you. And all other things that we always cry for, the protection, the healing, the deliverance that we need in our lives, he is assuring them unto you. Because once he moves with you, there is nothing that will attack you. Once you are in his presence, once you are with him, there are things that will not come near you. Because the Lord we live, the Lord that we Serve. He's a mighty God and he's a healer. He's a deliverer. We abide in the secret place of his most high and we are hidden from all the powers of darkness. Today I pray that the presence of the Lord will move with you. I pray that you turn away from the way that you're walking in, the wrong ways. And today you call upon the presence of the Lord. Moses said, the Lord, if you do not go with us, I will not go. I will not go. We will not go. Lord, today we pray that your presence will move with us each and every day of our lives. We will call upon your presence. And Father, as you assured your presence in your covenant, may it manifest. May you manifest in our lives. We need you, Jesus. We need you in every day of our lives. In the name of Jesus. Father, we trust in you and we hope in you, Lord, for all the fulfillment of things that we, we cry for. Because we know that in you, there is everything. Because we know that in you, there is protection. Because we know that in your presence, there is salvation. Because we know that in your presence, there is guidance. There is fulfillment of things that we need in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now there is one thing that I want you to know, my brothers and sisters. It is not only just being in the presence of the Lord. Oh, how do we keep ourselves in the presence of the Lord? It is not because that we will always pray and then the presence of the Lord will come. There are things that we have to do that keeps us in the presence of the Lord. One thing is, you might be asking yourself that how can me as a, a Christian or a child of God keep or know the presence of the Lord? No, there is things I want us to know to not in the best essential thing to keep the presence of the Lord. It is not just matter of prayer. It is not just matter of crying unto the Lord that will presence will come. You might have prayed for so long, but then the presence of the Lord is not is not with you, has not come to you. No, let me tell you, and no one can always pray with you exhaustively. 
to satisfy all that you need. No anyone, no, not a son of man. Maybe you can try. Oh, you, oh the Spirit of the Lord is the, one, the only one that can pray beyond expression. The prayer that, that can be exhaustively before the Lord. And now the only thing that we need as children of God, it is this. What does it take to be in the presence of the Lord? day and night as children of Israel used to move in the presence of the Lord day and night it is possible to abide in the presence of the Lord day and night but what matters is the relationship you have with God your relationship you have with God is what matters you can enjoy the presence of God without you cannot enjoy the presence of God without the relationship with him you can never you can never so this moment this moment i want to ask of you children of God i want to request you today from today onwards to create the relationship between you and the lord how do we create that relationship we have seen in acts 42 that they, 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 those who gotten saved by the apostles, they kept themselves steadfastly in the doctrines of the apostles. Now that is keeping yourself in the word of the Lord. I pray that today the Lord will help you to buy you time to read his word, to keep yourself in the word of the Lord. That is what will help you to grow and to bring you closer into the presence of the Lord. May you keep yourself in the word of the Lord. May the spirit of the Lord buy you time to read the word of the Lord. And may he reveal unto you the secrets of the word of the Lord. You know what the Bible speaks about his word? He said that heaven and the earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. His word will remain forever. Now I pray that the word of the Lord will be the foundation of your life that will keep the presence of the Lord or the relationship that will build a relationship with you and God himself. Now that's one thing. You can never enjoy that relationship with God without keeping yourself in the word of the Lord, without fellowshipping, without sharing, breaking the bread, without praying. When we pray, we communicate with God. We tell him our problems. We tell him our issues and the Lord is yet to answer and the Lord is about to answer. Last time, last time when I was praying, we read in Isaiah chapter 65 where he said that when you prepare to pray, I will answer. When you are yet to speak, I will respond. Now that's what makes a difference. That when we pray continually, the Lord will always answer our prayers. When we read his word, he will always reveal unto us the secrets of his kingdom. And we will build his, our, our relationship and his presence will manifest in our lives. Brothers and sisters, I tell you, these things the people that have perfected them and live in the presence of the Lord day and night, they have the intimacy with God. When we have the intimacy with God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's the intimacy that Jesus had, that God had with the world. That he could not let the world to fall. He could not let the world to be devoured. But he sent his son to redeem us. And the Bible says that we were dead in our own transgressions. But Jesus reconciled us with, back, with God back into his glory. Because he, we have the glory of the Lord upon our lives. Isaiah said that each and every person... That that was created in this world was created to manifest the glory of the Lord. So you are you have a distinction which is the glory of the Lord. And I pray that today you will understand the secret of his presence and you'll dwell in his presence as the Bible says in Psalms 91 verse 1 that he who dwells in the most secret place of the most high will dwell in his presence. Today I pray that the Lord will open your heart that the Lord will open your eyes to see the spiritual world to reveal unto the secrets of the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Now let me tell you the more intimate you are you are in the with the relationship with God is the more is how more you're gonna enjoy or manifest how God is gonna you're gonna enjoy the, the, the presence of the Lord and man and God himself manifest himself in your life let me tell you Moses had a relationship with God because he talked with God face to face and that made a distinction that made a difference I we read that Moses when he was on Mount Sinai he talked to God face to face that was the most important thing that made Moses, that made the difference between Moses and the children of Israel. And we read that when children of Israel saw him, Aaron and children of Israel, when they saw Moses, his face was shining, his face was radiant, and they feared. Let me tell you, Satan will always fear 
the presence of the Lord. We'll always fear to come before the presence of the Lord. Once the presence of the Lord is with you, Satan will always fear you to attack you. You have the covering. We see Job had a hedge of protection that even Satan could not touch him, could not touch his people, could not touch his children, could not touch his servant, could not touch his his substances. Now once we are in the presence of the Lord, once we build up intimacy with God, he will put a protection that people will distinguish, distinguish you, that they will say that you have the presence of the Lord, that we have seen God on your life. The people ran away from Moses because his face was shining. His face was shining. They ran away from him. Now this is where we say that Satan can never attack you once you are in the presence of the Lord. Once you are in the presence of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I ask of you that let's not labor for anything else, but let's labor for the presence of the Lord. For all that we need, we have them. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, the Bible says that seek ye the kingdom of God first and all other things will be added unto you. I promise you, I tell you all things that we need if we seek the presence of the Lord will be added unto you. Now this is the difference that Moses had because he was in, in, in intimate he was having an intimate relationship with God and if you are not in the covenant of salvation you may never know this, you may never know this. I want to give you an example. When we get married, we exchange vows. And when, when we get into marriage covenant or in marriage relationship, we exchange vows. When you get married, you make a covenant by exchanging vows and does not automatically mean that you exchanging vows. You are going to enjoy the intimacy with your partner because you made a covenant. Never, my friends, never. You can never ex ex enjoy the intimacy with your partner because you have exchanged vows. That cannot assure that. But some people can be in marriage with a, co with a covenant without the relationship or intimacy. You can be in the same house but sleeping in different bedrooms when you're not intimate with your partner because you exchange vows and you're keeping the covenant. Now, this is what most Christians we do. We keep the covenant because we got saved and then we accepted Jesus and we, pro we, 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 we were baptized. But because now we know we are born again, so we are just keeping the covenant. But now we do not enjoy the intimacy of God with God because this is what matters. This is what makes a difference. Enjoying the intimacy with God, that's what makes a difference. Once there is no intimacy, you cannot enjoy the presence of God. You cannot enjoy the presence of God. You might be even born again, but when the intimate relationship with the Lord make, that makes you enjoy His presence is not there. It's not there. So that's all that matters. We children of God to always enjoy the intimacy of God by giving, by reading the word of God, by fellowshipping. These are the things that will keep us. When we say let's pray, the Bible says we are communicating with God. We are talking with God. And what makes difference is when we communicate with God and we talk in his word and we, we are in, we're soaked in his word and that will bring his presence. When we give with the things that we do, let me tell you in the Bible. There was a man called Cornelius. Most of us, we know Cornelius. Cornelius was not even a born again, but he was a giver in all his life. He used to give. He used to sacrifice all that he had, share it with the needy people, with the widow. But when God came, when, when, when he gave and all those things, the charitable works that he did, they, they, they touched God's heart and he feared God. That's the Bible says that Cornelius feared God and his giving touched the, Lord, the Lord's heart and he said, sent his angel. He sent an angel to Peter and he said that go to the house of Cornelius for I have seen a man who has touched my heart and Paul went to the house of Cornelius and he prayed with him and he he, he, he preached to him the gospel of God and he became a Christian and let me tell you, you, what, you can not be, you cannot even be a Christian but once you understand the principles of the presence of the Lord once you fear the Lord, once you do his, his way, his, his things like breaking the bread, giving to the poor, to the poor, praying and also fellowshipping, this will build a relationship with you between God and God will always redeem you, will always make ways of you to come into his presence of you to come into his presence and to, to succeed his kingdom praying without 
Pray, when we pray, we pray, we always go deeper in the presence of God. So believers, if you do not have a relationship with God, or if you are not a believer, or if you are not even a born again, but you're saying that today I want to go to heaven, but today I want to begin a new life with Jesus. I want to have that intimacy with God. I want to pray with you tonight. I want to believe with you tonight. I want to pray with you this very moment that the Lord will make an impact in your relationship as long as you read his word as long as you trust in him as long as you always do what he says the lord of his presence is an assurance that is in his covenant the covenant you make with god when you accept him we all know that when we accepted jesus christ in our heart we pron- we confess some words which was the day we made the covenant with the blood of jesus when we say the lord take us from the, the book of death and bring us in the book of of, of in the book of salvation, in the book of life, Lord, that always cover us, that your blood, Lord, washes us. For we believe in our hearts and we confess with our mouth and our tongues. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, that was the time you entered in the covenant when you shun evil, when you rebuked the devil, all the ways of the devil, and decided to come back into the presence of the Lord. That was the moment, that was the time when you were redeemed from the backwardness, from the, 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 the lines of the devil, and brought into the covenant of the Lord by the blood of Jesus. When you shun evil and you started worshiping God, now you entered into the covenant. Now I pray that you enter into a relationship with Jesus by keeping his word, by being a giver, by worshiping him, by reading his word, because that's what matters in our lives. When we keep the covenant with God and we build our relationship with him, he will always appear unto you. I promise you, I assure you, that once the presence of the Lord is with you, you will never fail we see in Exodus chapter 33 that when Moses let's read read that very fast very quick Exodus chapter 33 I thank you Jesus I thank you Holy Spirit Exodus chapter 33 verse verse 13 we can start from verse 12 and Moses said unto the Lord see you have says See, thou sayest unto me, bring up these people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Moses is appealing to God, and he's saying that, Lord, you are telling me, go redeem my people, but now you're not telling me, whom am I going to go with? Whom am I going to go with? And he said, that yet has said, and and yet has said that has said I know you by your by my by your name I know you by name and has now found grace in my sight. Moses does not only see that God that, that God knows him by his name, that he knows the children of Israel by their name, and has promised him that he, he will go with him, that your grace will go with me, that he have found grace, that we are favored before the Lord. Yes, we are all favored before the Lord. Yes, the grace of the Lord abides and lives forever. But now what matters in his in, in the life. Now therefore I pray to you that if I found grace in your sight show me now the, your way that I may know you that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Now Moses is saying give me a sign. Show me a way that I may know that I have found favor in you. The Lord was telling Moses that I know you by your name and have you have found favor in my before me. Now Moses is saying show me the sign now show me the sign that I may know that we are your people that we have gotten that we have seen the grace before you and verse 14 says it and he said mark this verse 14 Exodus chapter 3 verse 14 and he said my presence shall go with you and I'll give you rest this is what matters my brothers and sisters this is what matters in our life the presence of God now God is giving Moses an assurance that you are not going alone. You are not going by the by the grace that I'm, I I told you. You are not going because I know you. Because where you are going, it's not just a matter of walkover. You are going to redeem my people. And now Moses, he is saying, that show me an a sign. Give me an assurance. And God in verse fourteen says, and said, my presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. And in verse fifteen he says that. He, <coughs> And he said unto him, if your presence, if your presence go not with me, carry us not anywhere. 
um, he says that if you're not going with us, if your presence is not going with us, do not even bother to redeem your people. But God gave him assurance that from where shall it be known that there that I and, and, and your people have found grace in your side and it is not that you... You go this with us, so, so shall we be separated, and I and your people, from all the people that, that, are up, that are upon the face of the earth. Let me tell you, Moses now is telling him that give us the, show us that if your prince is going to go with us, that that will give us a distinction that will separate us from the people on this earth. That because the presence of the Lord is with you, God is telling Moses that I will separate you from the people of this earth. Now this is what we say, that when the presence of God is with you, he will give you a distinction from all the people of the world. What will give you a difference from the people in the world, from the people that do not know God. It is his presence. Once you do the will of God, once you keep the promise, once you keep yourself in covenant, once you keep yourself in his presence, he will be distinctive. You'll be distinctive. You'll be different from the people of the world and people will see the presence and the glory of the Lord upon your life and they will know that there is something different. There is something deeper that they will need to tap from you because the presence of the Lord is with you when you move upright when you move well with the Lord his presence will go with you always when you stand out to be different from other people the Lord will always come unto you and he will deliver your problems you will deliver your sickness today I pray that the Lord will deliver you that his presence will move with you that his mighty hand will be with you will be upon you and he'll give you a distinction and he'll put a difference on you that even people in the world they will notice it they will see it and ask the ask themselves what is the secret that you have it is not a matter of walking saying that we are born again you do not need to explain to the world how you have God how you move in his presence but the Lord himself will always show it to the people they will show you always show his glory and to the people of the world in Jesus is my name how I pray that who are sick, may the presence of the Lord touch you. May the mighty hand of the Lord move with you. I will tell you another servant of the Lord in the Bible who esteemed in the presence of the Lord. Now this is David. David, wherever he could go, he inquired from the Lord because he knew he could not go alone. He could not attack the enemies alone. But when once he is God, the Lord before him, he will always overcome. He will always go in the right way. He will not be intimidated by the devil. He will not be intimidated by the enemy. Now we see when David was attacking Goriath, as a small boy he is, because he understood that was why was he was he was he once he is with God, he will always overcome, he will always overpower all the enemies, no matter how strong, no matter how powerful they are. The Bible says that Moses told Goriath that you come to me with spear and the sword and the shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Now the Lord, David, said the Lord before him, the Bible says in Psalms that will that I have set you before me. You are on my right hand side. I shall not be moved. Let me tell you, the storms of the world will not move you once you are in the Lord. The storms of the world will not kill you once you are in the, we, we, the presence of the Lord. All the challenges, all the, the, the powers of the, of the darkness will not challenge you once you are in the presence of the Lord. All the, the, the situation that mounts, that rises will not consume you because you are in the most, in the secret presence of the most high. All the almighty, all the enemy, all the powers of darkness will be put under your feet. And this is why God says that each and everything that the scorpions of this earth will not kill you for I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. This is the time, this is the moment as children of God to understand the deeper secret, the presence of the Lord what makes us move with the Lord and today, Father, we call upon you. We rebuke all the powers of darkness, Lord. We surrender everything Thing from the way that we've been moving in We've been moving in that are not godly. Father, we choose to come and dwell in your presence. For it is in your presence, Lord, that we can overcome. For it is in the presence of, of, of the Holy Spirit that we can change the world. Today, Father, we choose to fall on your feet. We choose tonight, Lord, to fall on your feet, to come back unto you. As Hebrews says, that let's approach the throne of grace. To receive all the, the mercy that we need. In such a times, we have walked not right with the Lord. We have not a 
blasphemed your name. We have been so selfish, Lord. We have not given heed to the cry of the poor. We have not given heed to the cry of the needy. We have not given heed to the cry of those who are suffering. But tonight, Lord, we choose to turn away from all the evil ways, from all the old ways. We choose to unite with you in spirit, Lord. We choose to do your will. We choose to move with you, Lord. We choose to stand with you, my Father. We choose to go out with your presence in the name of Jesus. Father, how I pray that you forgive that gentleman, that you forgive that woman, that you forgive that son and the daughters of this Lord that is praying, that is saying, Lord, that today I turn away from evil. That, Father, you forgive him and your presence, Lord, will move with him. May you touch their hearts. May your spirit move and convict their souls and their spirits, Lord. Tonight, Lord, we seek your face. We come unto you, King of glory, for we know that, Lord, in your presence, King of glory, we have all the assurances, Lord, that your hand will move with us every day, every night. Father, we pray that your presence will go with us, Lord, that you shine your face unto our lives, into our families, Lord. May your glory, Lord, shine into our families, Lord, and turn our hearts, Lord, from all the wickedness, from all the evil, Lord, that we're moving in, that we start, we walk in day by day. Father, we pray that your presence will go with us, before us, Lord, behind us, Lord, around us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and we see, Lord, in, in numbers, Lord, you told... <coughs> You told Moses to tell Aaron that that your presence will go with the, we, 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 will go with the children of God and your blessing, Lord, will be upon them. Father, how we pray that you shine your face unto our lives, Lord, unto our generation, Lord, unto our children, Lord, because we know when we are with your presence, when we are blessing, Lord, we are so distinctive that the world, Lord, will not understand because, Lord, we are hiding in your presence and we are your children. We are called by your name, as you told Jacob that Jacob that you are my my people called by my name Rebleshi katanda levoyo that even though you walk through war mighty waters they will not kill you even though you walk in fire they will not consume you tonight my god i pray that your children who are called your name that will come back lord that will turn from their old ways and come into your presence that not even waters not even fire that will consume them because you are with them you are holding them you know them by name and lord we know that when when your presence we have the assurance of your inheritance, Lord. How I pray, Lord, that you help us, Lord, now understand your secrets, Lord, of your kingdom in the name of our Lord Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, for this moment. I thank you, Father, for this night. For you are great. You are mighty, Father. How I pray for that person who has not been born again, but he wants to start a new relationship with you. Father, I pray that you touch his heart, that you touch his life, that you touch his life, Lord. You touch his soul and deliver him from evil. In the name of Jesus, if you know that you are not a Christian, you've not been born again, you've not been having a relationship with Jesus, today is a start is the day of a new beginning with Christ. I pray to you that God will touch you, that God will use you mightily. If you can speak these words with me, you can hold your hand in the chest and raise your hand, your right hand, and speak these words after me. Lord, I want to thank you for this time, for this moment. I have not known you for long, and I ask you, Lord, that you save me. I believe you are the Son of God. And I pray that you wrap my name from the book of death and write it in the book of life. I deny evil with all his ways. I turn away from all his ways. Today, I come into the light. I leave the darkness. And I believe that you're the son of God that was born and sent to the earth to redeem us and healed us and saved us. I believe that you died and rose again. And I believe in you. And today, I choose to move with you, to walk with you all the days of my life. I choose to serve you and I choose I, to, I choose you as my God over all the, the, the God that I've been worshipping in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing me. From today, if you have not been a born again, you are a born again. I pray that once this crisis is gone, you can find a spirit-filled church and go on to it and get baptized and start following the doctrine of God and fellowshipping and worshipping the Lord with all that you have and praying. The Bible says that we pray continually. When we pray, we touch the heart of God because it is through prayer that we can have communion with 
is God. It is through prayer that we can talk to God about our issues. Once we, we, we've got any challenges, always fall unto the feet of the Lord. He has a solution for you. He has an answer for you. He will deliver you. He will redeem you. He will save your life. He will heal you in the name of Jesus. The mighty powers that we need are in the hand of the Lord. He will deliver you. He will do everything for you. And what matters is your relationship with God. Today I pray that you build your relationship with God. You might have been saved, but whenever you pray, things do not work. Whenever you pray, things do not happen to work, to work in the same way. I want to tell you that my life was so downcast. I was a misery in in, in about five years ago but once I discovered the presence of the Lord once I knew what I'm supposed to do I remember when I was in high school I promised God that if you bless me I'll bless the people who are suffering like the, the life I went through as many of you have been knowing my life story I grew up in a polygamous family with a, 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 a 14 my dad had 14 children and my mom was being afflicted by our dad and the only thing I remember that, God, that our dad could give us was punishment, was was afflicting. He could come to beat us all the time. He could come to uh, to hurt all the Africa, uh, uh, affliction and bad words into our lives. And life was total amazing. And my mom could not hold the affliction of our dad because he reached at a point of dying and he had to run away. And we started a life of being orphans once when we had even our parents. But God did not forget us. He did not forget us. One thing I appreciate my mom for, he always told me to always pray. He prayed for us. And when I grew up, I surrendered everything in my life to Jesus. And I gave him a promise. The Lord, you have helped me out of this fire on this earth. I want to serve you. It is because of the willing heart that we have that the Lord will deliver you. When you are always willing to go somewhere, the Lord will send you there. And he, I promise you. And he his presence will be with you, will go with you. So today and onwards, I pray that if you have any challenge, may you seek the presence of the Lord and ask him, what is my purpose on this planet? And the Lord will always move you. Let me tell you what happened from that day when I promised the Lord and he has kept the fire in me of helping, of reaching out unto orphans. And now we are able to help a number of orphans. We've been feeding over, we have fed over 120 families amidst this COVID-19 amid is this situation and the Lord has been of great blessing. We have helped many people. Today I posted about the girl that was starving, that was dying, that we have been able to reach unto. Today I had good news when I took a picture of him and I saw the difference. That's what matters. That's what matters. That's what touches the, truth, the heart of the Lord. God say that Multitude, charitable works covers multitudes of sin. So let me tell you, once you do the breaking of bread, once you pull out, the, you put out the, the the generosity, the spirit of generosity, God will cover you, will cover the multitude of sin, will deliver your sick people in your life, will deliver your children from falling from the face of the Lord, will always bring them back into the presence of the Lord, will heal you. Let me tell you, it's the acts that we do that always touches the heart of the Lord. Today, if you've been not knowing the secret. I have given you the secret. May you go perfect it and the Lord will bless you. The Lord will always provide for you. The Lord will always make a way. It is because of the little acts that we do that will always bring the presence of the Lord in our lives. And when you pray, your prayer will go direct to the heart of the Lord. That is the prayer that God cannot deny. Once you sow a seed, once you give, once you fellowship, once you read the word of God, the presence of the Lord will always be with you and that will keep you in the intimacy relationship with God himself. That's all that I can tell you. If you practice that, I assure you, God is going to move mightily in your life. He's going to change your life in your life. In Jesus is my name. May God bless you. May you keep praying for our ministry and those who are able that God has blessed. May you sow a seed into us reaching out to the starving homes. Uganda is still under lockdown. Many people have not been working. They are starving and we're doing what we can to be a blessing to the nation. So today I pray that you sow a seed into the suffering children. All of you have been following our Facebook post. You have seen the great impact that we have caused in the life of, of, of the least of these. So we pray 
that you be part of us. We pray that you come and be part of us. You can always pray for us. And if God has blessed you, you can be a blessing to those that are hurting, to those that are suffering. Your seed matters the Lord. And your seed goes direct to the heart of the Lord. The Lord has given us the window so that we can pour up, we can show up our, our seed into that fertile soils so that God can bless you. That's what matters in life. When we are givers, the Lord will always be a giver. Job was a giver. Conorius was a giver. All those acts, the charitable acts that they did, they touched the heart of the Lord. So today I pray that you be a giver. You, or you always find a fertile ground to sow your seed. So I welcome you to partner with us to be able to feed families that are hurting in Uganda. It only takes $25 to feed a family for weeks. So your $25 can be a blessing, can be a protection, can put a hedge of protection, a hedge of fire around your family. Not only your children, not only your, your family, but all the people that are connected to you. It can be a, a, a connection, a, a, a conduit that will save your life, that will save your family. So today I pray that you be a blessing to those that are suffering because that's what is acceptable before the Lord. The Bible says that the only religion that is acceptable before my Father, it is giving to the orphans, taking care of the orphans, taking care of the widow and the needy people. So that's the only believable act, a religion before the Lord. We have seen scriptures, they all move towards giving, towards helping, towards fellowshipping, towards praying. So brothers and sisters, that let's practice the principles of God and God will surely bless you. That's why he says that test me with your tithes and offering and seeds and see if I won't open the windows of heaven. That is Marakai. And pour a blessing unto you and, ne and, not, and fail to contain it. So if we, want, if we want to touch the heart of God, we have to give. We have to sow a, a, a seed into the fertile ground. We have to tithe. So brothers and sisters, I welcome you to our ministry. Please pardon with us. Help us preach the gospel to those who are hurting. Once we help our children like Nakabuye Maria, we believe when he, she grows up and we have been taking care of her, preaching the gospel to her, she might be an angel that will save the world. She might be a great preacher that will reach out to many people in such trusting times. So you never know what the Lord is doing. Once we give and pray, the Lord will always sign his face upon our lives. We have a GoFundMe campaign that is running. I'll be reposting it or sharing it so that we can be a blessing to those who I need. So I ask of you, please pardon with us to serve or to reach unto starving families in Uganda and always take care of the children that are under our care in the name of our Lord Jesus. I bless the name of the Lord. I love you, my friends. Thanks for watching. I only request you to share this live video so that it can reach number of people, so that it can reach our friends who do not know Christ. You can name tag them. You can preach unto them or share this live video with them. The Lord will surely bless you. The Lord will surely I bless you and will surely protect you because of the charitable work that you do in Jesus' mighty name. May God bless you. We love you. I'm Felix from Pena Child Care Foundation in Uganda, Africa. God bless you. And please pray for us. We are trying to build a school and a water well for the community. We are praying that there is the lockdown so that we can resume our works. So let's keep in prayer. Let's keep breathing God. The Lord will help you, will surely bless you in Jesus' mighty name. I love you and I pray that the Lord will bless you. Father, I pray that for, your, for the child or your daughter that is watching this live video, how I pray that your hand of protection will move with him will be with him and his family. Those who have got sick people, Father, I pray that your hand of, of healing. You say that, Father, for we have set love on you, that you will deliver us, Lord. I pray that you deliver your daughters. I pray that you deliver your sons and daughters, Lord, that are starving, wherever they have pain in their body, Lord. May your spirit Touch them, Lord. Deliver them. Those who have got sick people in the hospital. I pray, Lord, that you deliver their lives. You deliver their lives in the name of Jesus. You say that there is nothing that is hard for me, that is impossible before me. Father, our weakness, our strength is your weakness. What we see, Lord, that we are strong, Father, it is your weakness. And you say that your ways are not our ways. Father, how I pray that today you deliver the sick people that, that are hurting in the hospital, that are crying, that are praying, that are seeking for your healing. Father, may your spirit move in that hospital, that where 
Your daughter has got a, a patient that is hurting, that do not know what to do. Father, provide an answer. You are the solution provider. You are an answer to our prayers. Father, whenever we pray, you say that you'll answer. Tonight, Lord, we pray that you will heal. And the Bible says that you send forth your word and heal us and rescues us from our graves. Father, I pray that you deliver the sick people, Lord, the hurting people, those who have got accidents, those who have got diseases, Lord, no matter how hard it is, Father, you can take away the cancer. I've seen you heal people with HIV, AIDS in Uganda. I know you can deliver it. No any disease or any situation that can stand at the call of your name. Father, I pray that your blood will wash them away, will forgive them in the name of Jesus, will forgive them. Your forgiveness, Lord, your forgiveness, Lord, you redeemed us, Lord. You are the God of redemption and the Lord of restoration. Restore our faith, Lord. That person that has been falling away, Lord, may you hold him, lay a hand and hold him, uphold him. Let him not fall away. Bring him into your grace. Bring him, Lord, into your grace, Lord. This is the moment, Father, I pray that for that person that has been falling, that has been falling away from your grace, that has been feeling is far from your, your, your word, from you, Jesus. Lord, bring him closer. Spirit of God, move into their hearts because you are the only comforter that we have. You are the only comforter that we have. That the Lord said that I will not leave you as orphans, but I will send you a helper. I will send you a counselor. I will send you a comforter. Lord, mend the broken hearts. That's the, that person that been feeling letting go of everything. Lord, touch him. Uprift him. Show him the light. May your light shine upon him right now. Right now, Jesus. May your light shine upon him. Let your face, Lord, shine upon him. Uphold him not to fall. In the name of Jesus. It's all that, it's only you, the Lord, that matters. Sometimes we do not know what would have what would have we done if you don't hold our hands. People like us who are falling, we do not know. If you take away your spirit, where well, we would fall. Father, I pray that you hold that person, that you let your spirit fall and raise him up. That person is feeling letting go. His heart is burdened. He feels tired of life. He's tired of everything that is happening. But Father, I pray that you minister into his or her life right now. Lord, I pray that you minister to the life of that person that is broken hearted, feeling that the world is letting him down. But Father, you who does not let your people down, may you strengthen them. The Bible says in Isaiah that those who hope in you, Jesus, they will be strengthened. Their faith will be strengthened. That they will walk and never grow weary, Lord. The youth will walk and never faint. Lord, may you strengthen the heart of that believer. May you strengthen the heart of that lady, that gentleman that has been falling away. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Move. Move into their houses. Move into their families, Lord. I know that you're always everywhere. And whenever we cry and pray, Lord, you answer. You always answer in the name of Jesus. Father, you say that when we speak in tongue, we are not talking to the sons of men, but we are talking to you, Lord. Father, how I pray that you fall unto your children. That the family has not been believing in your name. Father, let them see the light. You are able to change pa Saul into Paul, who became the mighty servant that strengthened the apostles, that spread your word, that strengthened churches. In the name of Jesus, may you strengthen and change your, your children who are not believing in you. The world has been falling away from your presence. Father, may you bring it back in your presence. May you deliver us. May you heal us from all the lies of the devil. In the name of Jesus. We choose to believe in your name and in you alone because you're the only one who is a solution. You're the solution provider. You are the answer to the world. In Jesus is my name. May you deliver those who have been falling away. May you redeem. May you forgive. Father, may the, you touch the hearts as you touch the heart of fellow and you harden his heart. The Bible says that your glory manifested. Father, when you touched and hardened the heart of fellow, how I pray that you touch the heart 
of the people that are not believing in you, that have been uh, that have been persecuting your name, as you've been able, Lord, to change Saul to touch his heart, and you tell this, and Ezekiel prayed and asked that, Lord, give me the heart of fresh and take away the heart of stone. I pray that you take away the heart of stone from the people that has not been believing in you. May you turn their lives, give them the conduit, Lord, to hold on to you to come to your kingdom, for you are able, and we choose to pray and deliver their lives and shine your glory into their lives in Jesus is my name. I thank you, Father, for your deliverance. I thank you, Father, for your healing. I thank you, Father, for your redemption. In the name of Jesus, may you redeem the world. In the name of Jesus, you are our foundations. You say the Lord that you formed the earth and its foundations, Lord. And it's on that foundation that we choose to lean or to stand on because we know that when the foundations are second, Lord, it's only in your word that we find our, our, our rest in Jesus' my name. I thank you, Father, and I bless your name for this moment, for this time, for your presence, for your glory, Lord, that you're dressing unto our lives. Father, may you take away the filthiness of, of uh, the filthy robe, Lord, that Satan is putting unto your children to rebuke them before you and give them the change of remnant in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We exalt you. We give you all the glory and the honor in Jesus. Jesus is my name. I pray and believe. Amen. Shalom. I want to thank you for watching and I cannot forget to request you, my brothers and sisters, to share this live video and to our friends so that we can be able to preach the word of the Lord. Paul said that for I am not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power to save. So you never know whom you will save. You will never know whom you will touch. But the Lord who is in heaven, who sees our doings in secret, will always lead you to that person. So keep sharing. Don't get tired of sharing. Don't get tired of praying. Don't get tired of giving. Don't get tired of fellowshipping. Don't get tired of reading the word of God. And do not get tired of preaching the word of God. The Thronians tells us that not to put out the spirit of fire, but to keep praying, to keep praying, keep pushing the Lord who formed you. He knows you by your name and his time, is his, his right timing is yet to come as long as you keep in his presence. In Jesus is my name. I have to go and I have to let you go, my brothers and sisters. Please share this live video. The Lord will surely bless you. In Jesus is my name. Shalom. Blessings.